Tiger Woods broke barriers not only on the green, but also for black athletes across the sports spectrum. Unfortunately, he also made history with one of the biggest downfalls of all time, both on the professional and personal fronts. Perhaps unsurprisingly, he left a lot of haters in his wake. Elon Nordegren met Tiger Woods at the 2001 Open Championship, and the two married in 2004, having two children together before their relationship was permanently rocked on Thanksgiving 2009. Nordegren allegedly saw a racy text from Woods' mistress, Rachel Yucatel, according to the Daily Mail. TMZ reported Nordegren attacked Woods, scratching up his face, after which Woods tried to flee in his Cadillac Escalade, but Nordegren allegedly struck the SUV with a golf club until Woods crashed into a fire hydrant and a tree. By 2014, Nordegren's tone had seemingly softened in an interview with People, wishing Woods well in his new relationship and complimenting him as a father. But just just one year later, Nordegren low-key roasted Woods during a commencement speech. She recalled that when she enrolled at Rollins College in 2005, she said she was 25, an immigrant, and married with no children, saying, "'Today, nine years later, I am a proud American, and I have two beautiful children.'" She then followed an applause break with this perfectly timed zinger, which sparked laughs and even more applause for those who knew her story. "'But I'm no longer married.'" Tiger's longtime caddy Steve Williams chose Woods to be his best man. In 2018, Williams told PGA of Australia that Woods is, quote, probably the greatest player that's ever played the game. But things weren't always gravy between the golfer and caddy. In the wake of Woods' 2009 cheating scandal, Williams told Woods he would have to re-earn his respect. Instead, Woods fired Williams in 2011, after which Williams told The Telegraph, I have been incredibly loyal, and then to have this happen, basically you could say I've wasted two years of my life." Williams later told In Depth with Graham that those two years were difficult, as people felt he knew of Woods' marriage infidelity. Williams quickly moved on from Woods, caddying for Adam Scott for his WGC Bridgestone Invitational win, an event Woods won seven times with Williams. Hey, I've got to tell you, David, I've been a caddy for 33 years, and uh, that's the best week of my life, and I'm not joking. Later, Williams reportedly said he wanted to rub Woods' nose in the win, though he used more aggressive and problematic language, according to ESPN. Woods defended Williams against allegations of racism, but told reporters the comment was hurtful. Another troubling phrase was used in Williams' 2015 autobiography when he wrote, "...it was like I was Woods' slave." Setting aside the problematic language for another time, it's clear he was definitely bitter with Woods, which is a shame considering how close the two men seemed to be at one point in time. Jocelyn James claims she was romantically involved with Tiger Woods for three years, thinking she was the only mistress. The adult entertainer revealed to Inside Edition that she was twice impregnated by Woods without him knowing. Shortly after the scandal broke, she released a string of racy text messages from Woods, telling Associated Press, "...I just wanted the public to know and the truth to be out there. If I would have known everything that was going on and wasn't being lied to, I would have done things differently." James went on to refer to Woods as an addict and even held a press conference where she inferred that his focus should be on his relationships rather than his golf career. In another interview, she talked about her own feelings of betrayal at Woods' hands, but ended on at least a somewhat positive note, saying, "...he's definitely not my favorite person, but I don't hate him." In December 2009, Roseanne Barr didn't hold back when bashing Tiger Woods on The Wendy Williams Show. The comic, who admitted she had been cheated on before, shared a list of things she'd do to Woods had she been Elon Nordegren during the cheating scandal. And then I would walk out and hit his car with a golf club and then leave with the dogs and the kids and his mother. She also busted out this classic and unusual form of revenge. I will wait until the fell asleep, and then I would hit him with a bag of dirty sweat socks right in the kisser. She sure doesn't seem forgiving towards adultery. Unfortunately, the Roseanne star has since endured her own public shaming scandal that forced her off of the show she created.
Reality star Jamie Grubbs is unfortunately better known as Mistress Number no. 2 in the Tiger Woods cheating scandal than she is for starring on VH1's Tool Academy. The former cocktail waitress publicly leaked a voicemail to implicate Woods' adultery and revealed to KTLA5 that Woods promised her he would break things off with his wife to only be with her. When she asked Woods if he had other mistresses on the road, he said, No, I'm too busy. I don't have time for that. I just like being with you. Grubbs also described Woods as being manipulative. I think he's very good at playing <clears throat> the person he you want him to be. For instance, Woods wouldn't drink or party to match Grubbs' vibe. You have these other women that say they met him in Vegas and he was a party animal and got drunk. I mean, there are so many sides to him that I didn't know, that I couldn't even tell you the person he is. Rachel Yucatel shot to unfortunate fame when the New York Post ran her image on a cover during the 9-11 terrorist attack, in which she appeared crying for her fiancé, who had been among the victims that day. By the decade's end, her face would be all over tabloids as mistress number one in the Tiger Woods cheating scandal. You could tell told Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald, I was branded, really, as the victim. And then 10 years later, I was branded the villain. She said she resented the double standard as well, saying, Tiger gets to win awards or win his different tournaments. He gets to come out of things and have mishaps and get up again and people want to cheer for him. But the women don't get that so much, not just with him, but with any scandal. And that's not really fair. According to TMZ, You could tell canceled a tell-all press conference in 2009 after allegedly agreeing to keep the affair confidential in exchange for a $10 million settlement, most of which she then reportedly gave back after a dispute from Woods' lawyer about whether or not she violated the terms of the agreement. In January 2021, You Could Tell will be featured in the two-part HBO documentary series about the scandal. Something tells us she's not going to sing Woods' praises in that one. In 2009, comedians had a field day when Tiger Woods' cheating scandal broke the news. We watched him make that long apology on television, and afterwards my wife goes, well, do you think a guy like Tiger could quit cheating on his wife? And I said, <laughs> Comedian George Lopez was no exception. The Lopez Tonight host proceeded with jokes and skits centered around the golfer's controversy. But it's not just the cheating scandal that has soured some people's opinions of Woods. In 2016, the five-time Green Jacket winner hit the green with then-president-elect Donald Trump two days before Christmas. Prior to the presidential election, Lopez voiced his displeasure with the Republican candidate, telling Bloomberg Politics Trump being elected, quote, would be a significant issue for people of color. So when TMZ asked the comic for his thoughts about the golfing buddies, Lopez replied, that's just a couple of white dudes playing golf. So Tiger is a Republican and Tiger voted for Trump. I didn't vote for Trump, so I wouldn't golf with him. As a filmmaker, Jordan Peele is best known for writing and directing the critically acclaimed movie Get Out, which won a 2018 Academy Award and landed three additional nominations. The socially conscious film effectively coined a new term, the sunken place, used to describe systemic inequities in American culture. The Urban Dictionary further elaborates this term symbolizes the metaphorical place a person goes to when they are compliant to their own oppression. So when Tiger Woods and President Donald Trump were making headlines for the anticipated golf outing in 2017, Peel couldn't resist taking a shot at the golfer he once portrayed in a mad TV sketch, tweeting, now you're in the sunken place. NASA's as bold as they come. The rapper has sold over 25 million records and is known for his searing diss tracks, which means a name drop by this 13-time Grammy Award nominee is not always a good thing. Tiger Woods felt exactly how a Nas shout-out could sting in 2004, with the release of These Are Our Heroes. In the track, the artist compares several black athletes and entertainers to slaves trying to please their masters, some of whom, like Woods, he calls out by name. Four years after the track's release, Nas backed his opinion, citing the professional golfer's reaction to a commentator. In 2008, Golf Channel commentators Nick Faldo and Kelly Tillman were talking about how dominant Woods was compared to his competition. As Faldo suggested that competitors should gang up on Woods, Tillman interjected the cringeworthy phrase, lynch him in the back alley. Tillman was suspended for the remark, but according to Woods' agent, Mark Steinberg, Woods and Tillman are friends and quote, we know unequivocally that there was no ill intent in her comments. 
Nas thought otherwise, telling Hip Hop DX, Tiger Woods standing up for this white lady who said something about him being lynched is a cool move to me. God bless the brother. I like to see him doing his thing, but that's a flaw in his character. That's an issue I would have with Tiger Woods. Fox Sports' Rob Parker was both suspended and eventually let go from ESPN after making comments questioning the, quote, blackness of NFL athlete Robert Griffin III and comparing him to Tiger Woods. The topic of Griffin III wanting to dissociate himself as an African-American football player was brought up on the December 13, 2012 episode of ESPN's program First Take, during which Parker mentioned how the quarterback had a white fiancé and was rumored to be a Republican and then asked, is he a brother or is he a cornball brother? Parker would define a cornball brother as someone who, quote, is black but not really down with the cause, saying, he's not one of us. Considering that Woods was married to a white woman, has associated with Republican President Donald Trump, and called himself Brown in a press conference, does that mean that Parker thinks that about Woods as well? The rivalry between Tiger Woods and Sergio Garcia dates back to the 1999 PGA Championship. After Woods won at Medina, he continued to flourish both on the green and as a public figure. Meanwhile, Garcia stayed relevant by mouthing off about Woods, which he cranked up considerably in 2013. In a 2013 press conference, Woods' nemesis perpetuated a stereotype associated with black people when answering whether or not he'd invite his rival to dinner, saying, We will have him round every night. We will serve fried chicken. Woods rightfully fired back at Garcia's racial slur on Twitter, saying, the the comment that was made wasn't silly, it was wrong, hurtful, and clearly inappropriate. Woods later added a second, more conciliatory tweet, saying, I'm confident that there is real regret that the remark was made. He appeared to be correct, as Garcia later apologized. But don't get me wrong, uh, I understand that my answer was totally stupid out of place. Despite the apology, when a reporter asked Woods if he would consider contacting Garcia to bury the hatchet, Woods bluntly replied that he wouldn't. It doesn't seem to be one-sided either, as Garcia responded to another question to the reasons he doesn't like Woods with, there's people that you connect with and there's people that you don't. He doesn't need me in his life, I don't need him in mine. 21 years in the making, it is safe to assume this feud between Woods and Garcia will never end. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.